Hello, welcome to the Thursday, October 22nd, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Our handler, Daniel, has been tracking some fairly peculiar malicious emails. Now, they come in the form of what looks sort of like a shipping notice. Many of them are in all caps and uh, attempt to impersonate a logistics or shipping a company that actually exists. So that's usually used as the from address. Also, a couple of sort of details within these emails appear to be correct or somewhat legitimate. Like, for example, the name of particular ships that are being mentioned in these emails, as well as sort of the ports that these ships frequent. Also interesting that uh, these emails are typically sent on weekdays from 2 to 4 a.m. UTC, which Daniel suggests may indicate that these emails were sent in the morning in Bangkok, Shanghai, sort of uh, these uh, time zones. But a lot of the mail servers being used uh, are located in Malaysia and, of course, a sort of globally distributed set of mail servers otherwise. The attachment that comes with these emails uh, typically is ancient Tesla. So that's spyware that typically does exfiltrate stolen data via HTTPS or over email. Now, the email here uses SMTP over TLS or SMTPS on port 587 TCP. And the NSA released a report this week of uh, the exploits being known by Chinese state-sponsored actors. Another name for the report may have been that, well, uh, Chinese state-sponsored actors are using the same vulnerabilities that everybody else is using. And of course, vulnerabilities we have talked about here at length uh, this year, like, for example, all these perimeter security devices that I keep talking about, Pulse Secure, VPN, F5, Big IP, Citrix, ADC vulnerabilities, and then, of course, the standard set of sort of client-side vulnerabilities as well. But well, maybe you can take a look at the report and uh, double check uh, your organization for these vulnerabilities, given that uh, these are heavy hit uh, by pretty much everybody in the business of installing malware. And if you find a vulnerable system, as usual, it's probably already compromised a couple times. And well-known security researcher Raphael Bollock uh, came up uh, with an entire set of uh, different URL spoofing vulnerabilities in mobile web browsers. The idea here is that an attacker is able uh, to essentially put arbitrary host names into the URL bar that do not match the site the user is actually visiting. A couple of these tricks, for example, include JavaScript that will force reloads of the site and then update the URL bar. And essentially, since the site is constantly loading, it never sort of gets uh, to update the URL bar and the spoofed name remains. And there are about seven or so different vulnerabilities that were found and uh, disclosed by Rafe in this release. Then we have another quarterly critical patch update or a CPU from Oracle. And this time it includes 402 patches, just a little bit short of the record, apparently, according to Tenable, which was 440 patches from July. Now, the usual disclaimer here, while the number is very large, it covers all of Oracle's products. So not just the database, but also a lot of the middleware and additional software, things like Java, of course, and also databases like MySQL that are part of Oracle. And of course, we can't really talk about every vulnerability that was listed here in this podcast. So just a couple highlights. I saw there were five vulnerabilities in web logic, which is always an interesting target that were rated with a CVSS score of 9.8 and a low attack complexity. So that's certainly something that you may as a result see exploited relatively quickly. 
And of course, for uh, the clients, probably and probably the most used Oracle software out of this Cradle patch update is Java. And yes, you may have received this week an update for Java as well. So when you see that pop up box and it doesn't come from a malicious website, you probably want to apply the update. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening. Uh, this week, I'm actually teaching our Defending Web Application class again. And if you're interested in the class, next time I'll teach it here in the US time zone. Eastern time will be in December. So take a look and you should find a list of classes I teach below the show notes. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.